Another step towards normalcy, the European Union ready to welcome back Americans. But with some conditions. Tonight on the 10, what you need to know ahead of the summer travel season. To enter France, um, travelers will need a, a sanitary pass. From COVID restrictions and staying safe. To the excitement of once again getting away. I'm a big fan of the value of travel. And uh, I think the value of travel is going to be even more when we come out of COVID. The 10 on NECN starts now. Well, the pandemic has pride of deprived us of a lot of things we used to love doing, like, you know, the obvious things like getting together with family and friends, getting together maybe in a large group, can't, couldn't do those things for so long. Restaurants, bars, or maybe a nightclub if it was 15 years ago for me at least, but maybe the biggest one for a lot of people, traveling. Yeah. We haven't really done it in the last year. It seems like the days of planning those trips, the hotels, the flights, all that, that's the distant past. And while the possibility of going places like Italy and France and Portugal still out of our hands right now, as you see from all these lovely pictures of vacations past, it's not long so we can see that again. Yeah, those vacations seemed like a very long time yeah. ago for either of us. And the EU, though, reportedly looking to let American tourists return soon. So maybe we could get back there. Pretty big news if you're hoping to go globetrotting in the near future. But let's face it, going overseas isn't the only foreign thing to us right now, because no matter where we go, we have to adapt to traveling in a pandemic and also understanding the new logistics that go into all the planning. If only they were this close to each other. Oh it would be easy God. to hop all over the place. Ten out of the ten, we're going to look at everything from what a post-pandemic Europe will look like now. To that go into all the planning. If only they were this close to each other. Oh it would be easy God. to hop all over the place. Ten out of the ten, we're going to look at everything from what a post-pandemic Europe Europe will look like now to how booking a trip is. So let's take a closer look at the latest roadmap for reopening announced by the European Union just yesterday. The proposal would grant fully vaccinated people and their children from the U.S. the ability to visit those EU nations. So here's a look at the 27 nations that make up the European Union. If you're wondering what the dark one in the middle is, that's Switzerland, not part of the EU. I had to look it up. Uh, there are still uh, a lot of them closed to non-essential travel. The proposal, though, is subject to change at the moment. Everything, like everything right now. And it'll also need the approval of the European Commission. But if that happens, tourists could be allowed back by the end of June. Right around the corner, Jackie. Right. Mission. But if that happens, tourists could be allowed back by the end of June. Right around the corner, Jackie. Right around the corner. And for months, the EU has been trying to set up an inter in that plan to that's intended to show how the system could actually be adapted for other countries. And while the union works to figure out those logistics, we spoke with Arnaud Mentre, the F French consul general to Boston, who says France is almost ready to welcome back Americans once again. As far as France is concerned, uh, President Macron has said it very clearly. Uh, as of uh, June the 9th, uh, international travelers will be allowed to come to France to visit France, and this uh, applies specifically to our American friends, given the level of vaccination here in the in the in the U.S. And the level of vaccination. Given the level of vaccination here in the in the in the U.S. And the level of vaccination is a key part of the European Union's decision here. The union cited that 32 percent of Americans are fully vaccinated, which is really great compared to the rest of the globe, Tim. Yeah, we've been doing it well here in the U.S., especially well here in New England. But many thought the travel ban would be short lived. If you thought that, you were wrong. It officially started March 17, 2020, after COVID became a global pandemic. It's supposed to be one month. That's April. It was extended and then extended again on May 8th of last year. There were a couple exceptions, like people who were dual citizens for essential travel or health reason, reasons. And now, all the way at the end of this calendar, 14 months later, this is the first glimpse we're even getting of an actual timeline for returning to travel. So after all of this time and all of this patient waiting, with Europe having closed borders for about a year now, what will it be like when you finally head back there or maybe head there for the first time? We asked travel guru Rick Steves. You've heard of him, right? Popular television host and the founder of Rick Steves Europe, a travel business bringing thousands of Americans to Europe every year. Rick, of course, is well known for helping us explore the lesser known areas in Europe as well to help tourists get that real feel for the country they're visiting. He's got more than 40 years of travel experience. And he says, don't expect everything to be hustling and bustling the minute you walk over there. Like most things right now, people returning to Europe will also come in phases. When we go to Europe, uh, I think it's going to be incremental how Europe opens up. First, it'll be really motivated people who have a reason to go there and are willing to 
to go through all sorts of hoops. And then it'll be quite easy for individual travelers. And then after that, you'll see organized travel, you know, um, bus tours and river cruises and that kind of thing. Uh, but it's going to be step by step. And some of the most well-known landmarks aren't even open yet. The Eiffel Tower is still closed to visitors. So is the Louvre. Parts of the Colosseum in Italy slowly reopening. And one of the most socially distant destinations in Ireland, the Cliffs of Moher, open, but only to residents of County Clare in Ireland, where it's actually located. You think the locals still go there? Yeah. It is beautiful. It is really beautiful. Hey, we go hikes in our backyard. That's Maybe true. they do, That's too. True. And whether you're going to those places or not, Rick Steve says if you feel safe traveling and do decide to go, make sure to stay on top of your reservations. Also, look out for any changes. So if you're going to go this summer, great, but make sure that you are flexible Remember, there's no up-to-date information. There's a lot of small restaurants and museums and experiences that may have been open before COVID that are not open now. So uh, you need to double check things. I think it's really important to go online and, and make sure you understand, is the museum open? Does it require reservations? Is there um, sort of capacity limits? And we don't know how that's gonna be. Yeah. On a smaller scale here, my family were trying to go to Chicago in August later mm -hmm. this summer. And we're looking now and it's tough. Uh, museums aren't open, but they might be. The right. Baseball games, 12%, but it might get bigger. Everything is subject to change. We mentioned that, and that's one yeah. thing to keep in mind, especially if you're doing a big trip over to Are Europe. Are people still mask wearing in that yeah. country? So you got to definitely keep up because that could change as well. And it's not just the big touristy spots that you need to keep track of. We've actually been talking about the EU as one entity, one big 27 country entity, but each individual country has its own specific COVID rules as well. A lot of places require a negative COVID test to even enter that country whether you're vaccinated or not. The plans could change as the EU irons out its reopening plans for tourists, especially American tourists. In other parts of the world right now, take Bermuda. Visitors there need to get tested before they arrive, the day they arrive, and then four days into their trip. Think about that. Still a lot of testing going on. And if you test positive at all, you're prizing all this a mandatory two-week quarantine. And it might seem like fun at first, especially if you're in a place like Bermuda, but think about how much that could cost. Two more weeks in a place like that. So what can you do before you go? Here's travel agent Suzanne Bowering. Check your policy, see what's covered, what would be out of pocket, and prepare for the worst case scenario. Bring something to do, bring a book, pack your medications, just make sure everything is taken care of at home. Bring your suntan lotion. Yeah, and this is something you might not have thought of in years past, but Bowering also recommends purchasing that COVID insurance if it's available. Yeah, absolutely. It's also worth checking in on your airline to see the latest COVID travel restrictions and cancellation policies. They are changing constantly and more and more people are taking to the skies. This past Sunday, actually, the TSA says more than 1.6 million people travel throughout the United States in airports in a single day here in this country. And that is the highest point since the pandemic began. So Americans definitely getting a little bit more at ease with headed out into the skies. Yeah, going to the airport, traveling, not just driving around in your own neighborhood or in your own section of the country. Seems like people are getting more comfortable going all over. Yeah, and your passport isn't going to be the only thing they're going to need on this trip. You know, you've heard the talk already about these vaccine passports, right? That's come up a bunch of times. The EU isn't there just yet. But it is pushing to launch this shared digital health pass. The pass would allow tourists to kind of travel freely across borders this summer. Still a lot of issues that have to be worked out and all that, but the discussion is already happening. Yeah, like how much would it cost you for this? What's about the data and privacy issues that could come into play and also technical issues too mm. of the system. But the union's justice commissioner says without a joint health pass, Europe could be in danger. We asked the French consul general about this and he says France is already testing its own version. They're calling them sanitary passes, but they say it with a better accent. This Wednesday, we start uh, using the for travels between France and Corsica. So it will be a first experiment. And then we are expanding this use uh, throughout France and throughout the EU. And we'll soon be in a position to uh, determine how to grant them to international travelers. And Rick Steves tells us that the idea of a vaccine passport is nothing new. And he says it actually makes perfect sense when you think about protecting others. I love the vaccine passport. I've had a passport ever since I was a teenager. And when I traveled when I was a kid, I had my passport and I had what's called an international certificate of vaccination in my passport. Uh, it's very reasonable for a society to want to know who's coming in. When a society has health regulations, it's not to protect us who want to visit that country. It's to protect the people of that country from the people they're letting in. And they want to know, certainly, that we are safe. 
Protecting other people sounds, people sounds familiar, right? So we've gone over what the EU's plan is and what changes you could potentially see as a tourist headed over there. And some of the precautions. Protecting other people sounds, people sounds familiar, right? So we've gone over what the EU's plan is and what changes you could potentially see as a tourist headed over there. And some of the precautions to make sure you don't lose money. But I think you should look to plan to book perhaps later in the summer. So I wouldn't be kind of the first ones in the first week of June. I think if you go later, on in the summer, there is a better chance that things will hopefully be back to normal and the touristy things that people love doing um, will hopefully be open. I definitely think Greece, Turkey, Croatia will be very popular and great places to go this year. Um, they did, you know, especially Greece, a great job managing the, the whole situation last summer. And I think they're very keen to welcome people back. Greece sounds good. Greece is always on my <laughs> list of recommendations. Been there twice. Need to go again. Would yeah. go almost every year if I could. Good for the summer months. Too. It is amazing. But if you're not ready to travel, Rick, almost every year if I could. Good for the summer months. Too. It is amazing. But if you're not ready to travel, Rick Steves is also doing a weekly virtual travel event called Monday Night Travel on his website, ricksteves.com. Always that virtual option for a little while longer all we need it. I just am excited we got to talk to Rick Steves. Yeah. I mean, obviously a very famous guy who's traveled all over the world. I mm -hmm. think it's interesting the little thing he's doing on Monday. I wouldn't call it little, but the the thing he's doing on Monday nights, too, because I'm a planner, so I like to see this stuff in advance. Yeah. So if you could watch and see all these places and hear all these recommendations, it kind of alleviates some of the concern that I have. Not concern, necessarily, but making sure you see everything and do everything when you're... Watch and see all these places and hear all these recommendations, it kind of alleviates some of the concern that I have. Not concern, necessarily, but... Making sure you see everything and do everything when you're somewhere. Yeah, you, so want, maybe a you don't want to have phone to right there with it, so you're ready to go if you need to go. They could have made it wild size, though, guys. I mean, we dropped the It's ball. around the same size, and it just fits right in there. I actually already did it. It's for a man's wallet, that's for sure. Okay. Well